my name is Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. I love sharing all things fabric, I've got a nice big pile of fabric here to talk about. Patterns, things that I've made, things that are inspiring me. Um, I love sharing makes and anything really to do with crafting and sewing. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, then please do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when my next video comes out. So today's video is going to be a fabric and pattern haul. So I have been buying lots and lots of different fabrics and then I've got a couple of patterns as well, thinking about my autumn wardrobe and things that I want to start making. Um, and lots of these patterns have been inspired by other people. So I'm going to be mentioning a couple of people too. Before I dive into all of the fabrics that I've got in my hand, um, I thought I'd let you know what I am wearing. I'm wearing one of my most recently made and shared um, Westcliff dresses. So this is a pattern by the Friday Pattern Company. It's a faux wrap dress and then I've, I've sewn the maxi length for this. This is a cotton jersey that I got from Rainbow Fabric and down below so you can go and check them out because they've got loads of fabrics that have been heavily discounted. Um, this fabric is a cotton jersey so it's really comfortable. It's a green background with lots of flowers all over them. And then I've sewn up the maxi length. I've sewn up the maxi length. Sorry, I'm just getting rid of everything on my lap. Um, with this gorgeous long skirt and then I've got the ruffle on the bottom. Um, and it's a faux wrap, but I have got a tie that just fastens at the front. Really, really comfortable dress to wear. Definitely feels like secret pyjamas. So I'm just going to grab my notebook because I've got details of what all the different fabrics are and also the patterns. The patterns I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about at the end, but they're all PDF patterns and I haven't printed out the instructions. So what I tend to do is I just have them up on my laptop as I'm sewing. Um, I just find that a lot easier. So I haven't actually got the physical patterns to show you, but I've written down all of the information and I will pop in um, line drawings of all of the patterns too, just so you can see what they look like. So I think we'll start with fabric first. So the first fabric is inspired by Laura, who is the Specky Seamstress. I think she shared this fabric and I think she might have bought it as well. So I am copying Laura. I hope you don't mind um, because I just absolutely loved this fabric when she shared it. So I want to make some more leggings. So I'm going to use a tried and tested pattern to me, which is the Hubie leggings by Sew Over It. I know it's a pattern that I feel comfortable wearing. It's a pattern that fits me really well too. Um, and it's a pattern that I know can withstand wearing all day at school and also when I'm teaching the little ones PE. And um, they're also really comfortable to wear, which is really important. So um, Laura shared this amazing lemonade fabric um, from Fabric Godmother. I just love the green background, but then all of these sort of um, lemonade glasses. I think it's really, really fun. Um, so I've bought enough of this to make myself a pair of leggings and if I've got any left over then I'm going to use the, um, I might use the Sandpiper swimsuit pattern to make a top out of this because I think that'll go really nicely with a pair of leggings. Um, and my favourite thing to do is actually wear, um, I used another bralette pattern, I can't remember the name at the moment but I'll put an image in of, of what it looks like. Um, and my favourite thing to do at night, because I get quite hot, is I tend to wear either some leggings and a bra top, or I tend to just wear some shorts and a little bra top. So I might use the sandpiper if I've got enough of this fabric to make myself just a little bra top to wear to sleep, uh, to wear to bed, to go to sleep. So that's my plans definitely for this fabric. I think it's absolutely amazing and it's so fun. And this was in the sale. Um, I'll link it down below if Fabric Godmother have got any of it left, but I just thought it was such a fun print that I know that the children are gonna love it when I wear them to school. And then I ordered some of this amazing pineapple print. Um, again, it's sportswear lycra. Is that what they call it? Um, sports swim lycra. And this has got pineapples all over it. Now I only got half a metre of this because it is super duper wide. Oh, showing you the wrong bit. But yeah, it's really, really wide fabric. So I only got half a metre and this is definitely going to become the top half of the Sandpiper swimsuit. But I'm just going to wear it to bed because um, I think it's um, going to be really, really comfortable. I think that fabric is super fun. It's got little pineapples all over it. Um, and yeah, I only got half a metre because I know that I'm just going to make like a little sports top out of it. And again, that was in the sale too. So if there's any of this left, I'll link it down below for you. 
um, but I think that's going to, this fabric feels really soft and I think it's just going to feel really comfortable against my skin um, for when I'm going to sleep. So those were the two fabrics that I got from Fabric Godmother. And then I've got a little um, pile of fabric that I got from um, Faye, who is Studio Jepson. So I could not resist. I was on holiday when Faye shared this fabric and I was really hoping that there was some of it left. Um, and when I got back, I um, discovered that there was still some of this fabric left. And it's this amazing um, sort of pumpkin print, Halloween-esque, Halloween autumn-esque uh, fabric. I just absolutely adore it. And actually, I've just noticed there's little spiders all over it too. So it's a cotton poplin. And it's quite a narrow fabric. It's by um, Helen Black, the Dashwood Studio. It's got all these gorgeous little spiders all over it and little spider's webs. And the thing that I loved the most was all the different colourful pumpkins. It's really bright, which I absolutely love. And I think it's going to make a really fun dress for the autumn and Halloween. The pattern that I think I'm going to use is a new pattern that I've just bought from... Let me check that I say this correctly. I think it's Bella Loves Patterns. Yes, Bella Loves Patterns. And it's the Floor, F-L-O-R, Dress and Top, um, which is designed to be used with quite structured cotton fabric. So I'm going to use that um, for the season that I want to sew this dress up for. The weather will be a little bit chillier, but I know that you can layer up that dress. So I'll just pop a long sleeve top on underneath and then have this dress on over the top. It's an amazing dress with loads of ruffles. So I cannot wait to make it. Um, but that's what this fabric is going to be turned into. I think there's still a little bit of this fabric left. So I'll link it down below if um, they still got some left. Super speedy service from the lovely Faye. She communicates so well when you've placed an order. You always get a little email with um, like a thank you. Um, and then she always includes a little postcard with a lovely thank you note too. Faye also included a little um, sort of fat quarter of some other fabric, which I absolutely love with these dogs all over it. Very tempting, Faye, to buy more fabric. Um, I love the red colour of this, and I think that would make a super cute dress as well. Or maybe a skirt, a really gathered skirt would look really cute in that fabric. And then what you also get is um, a little thing that says lucky so-and-so. Um, where you get a little raffle ticket um, attached and every month Faye has a little raffle going for anyone that's bought something from her which is just such a lovely touch so thank you so much Faye I am very excited about turning this into the Halloween dress of dreams so thank you for the really speedy service I can get that in the wash um, and that will be a project for the next couple of weeks which is very exciting um, the next pile that I've got on my lap are some remnants from Like So Amazing. So Sarah shared that they were having a little remnant sale and there was a discount code to get an extra 10% off the remnant. And I just ordered a couple of remnant pieces. So the first one is unusual for me because it's a dark fabric. It's a black um, linen. It's a rayon linen. It's definitely not going to show up because of all the light. It got extremely bright then. Um, but it's this black um, rayon linen fabric. I bought 1.3 meters of this fabric because it was a remnant. Every time I hold it up, the light goes really strange. Um, I'll put a photo in of what this looks like because it's very difficult to um, show it, but it's just a black rayon linen fabric. And I think I might turn this into the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen. Um, the lovely Louise, who is Louise Carmichael over on Instagram, has made loads of versions of the Anthea blouse and she really inspired me to get the pattern. She's made so many beautiful versions. Do head over and check her out. Um, lots of inspiration. She makes, be makes beautiful clothes. Um, and I have been umming and ahhing about um, buying the pattern, but the most recent blouse that she made just really made me fall in love with it. So I'd really like to turn this linen fabric, the rayon linen fabric, into an Anthea blouse. Um, and I'm really excited about that. I hope I've got enough because the sleeves are quite poofy. I'm not sure if I'll have enough with 1.3 metres. If I don't have enough of this fabric to make an Anthea blouse, then I think I'll make a Sagebrush, um, Friday Pattern Company Sagebrush blouse instead, because I know that I can get that out of just over a metre of fabric. Um, and that will go with some of my more brighter coloured like trousers and skirts that I've got in my wardrobe. So I think it will be quite a statement piece um, for my wardrobe, especially for the autumn and winter. Um, so that's the first fabric. The next one I've got for my daughter, Lola. She saw this fabric and fell in love with it. And it's just a cotton jersey. Um, and it's got unicorn print and ice creams all over it and like sunglasses and things. And I just think it's really fun. 
hold it up so you can see. I'm just going to use this to make a mini KL KLP t-shirt by Faye, who is Studio Jetson. They've got a really great um, sort of kids um, t-shirt pattern. So I'm going to use this fabric to make a little t-shirt for Lola. And I've got just less than a metre of this fabric, so I hope I can squeeze out a t-shirt for her. The print is just really fun and she loves unicorns as well. And I love that pop of brightness that you get from some of the neon within the fabric. So like this neon pink here, really, really fun. And then the next fabric that I've got is this gorgeous gingham print fabric. It's a cotton fabric. I can't remember if it was sage green or dock egg blue. I think it might be sage green. Um, and I got 1.2 meters of this fabric because it's a remnant. Um, and this is either gonna become the Anthea blouse by um, Anna Allen. I'm not sure if I'll have enough fabric. It is quite wide, but I think that takes up quite a lot of fabric, that pattern. And if I can't do that, then I'm going to turn it into the sagebrush. So both of the fabrics, the, um, the black fabric and this fabric, are going to either become the Anthea blouse or the sagebrush. Um, I just love gingham fabric and I love that colour. It's a really beautiful colour and I think it's going to be a great addition to my autumn wardrobe too. Um, so I'm very excited about getting those sewn up fabric that I've got to share with you is a fabric that I got from First of Fabrics and it is for Lola. She's a massive Harry Potter fan and the lovely Tamlin who is sewn at the time, sewn on the time, um, shared this fabric with me. It's a black background so it's going to be really difficult to show again. I think it's going to make the light go a bit funny um, but it's got all the initials of the different Harry Potter houses. So it's got a blue R for Ravenclaw, it's got a yellow H for Hufflepuff, it's got a green S for Slytherin, and then it's got a, where's the other one? Um, a red G for Gryffindor. It's just a cotton jersey. I've got enough to make her a little t-shirt with it. Um, it's a really fun fabric. Yeah, it's making the light go a bit strange. Um, but yeah, she's really excited. I think I'm probably going to use the, either the Tabitha t-shirt from the Make It Simple book by Tilly and the Buttons. And I can just grade that down for her. Or I'm going to use the mini KLP pattern which I talked about before by Studio Jepson and um, because I know that that fits her really well and it's a great pattern um, so that was the next fabric from First of Fabrics they've got some really fun jerseys in at the moment so I'll link that down below if you are interested in some and Lola's really excited about me sewing that t-shirt up for her too and then I've got some fabric from Sister Mintaka so um, Sandeep sorry the tissue it was still in tissue paper so Sandeep shared this whilst I was on holiday. Um, I got a little, I think if you subscribe to the newsletter, often you get a little sneak peek at some fabrics and you get to shop them first. Um, and I didn't really do any fabric buying whilst I was on holiday, but when I got the email, I know that Sister Mintaka's fabrics sell out super fast, um, especially if they're as beautiful as this fabric. Um, so I did treat myself to a little bit of this fabric. It's a cotton fabric. What was it called? Um, Sorry, I've got my notebook here. It's called a homegrown flowers and it's a cotton fabric and I got two meters of it. And I think this is going to become the Bella Loves floor dress as well. I just absolutely fell in love with the gorgeous colors from this fabric. I absolutely love it. It's on a black background, but it predominantly looks like it's got a green background because of all the leaves. And then you've got these gorgeous bright red and orange flowers. They're just absolutely beautiful. The orange ones remind me of tulips, which is one of my favorite flowers. It's a cotton fabric, but it feels like a lawn. It's really soft. And because it's a cotton, it hasn't got a huge amount of drape. And the Bella Loves pattern doesn't want, uh, it doesn't call for fabrics that have got a huge amount of drape. So I think this is gonna work so nicely for that pattern. Um, I absolutely love it. It's quite a wide fabric. I'm not sure if there's any of this left, but if there is, I will link it down below. Otherwise, I'll just link Sister Mintaka because Sandeep's got the most gorgeous fabrics over on her website. Um, so, yeah, that was the only one that I went for out of that collection. There were so many other beautiful fabrics, but I did resist in the end. Um, and I think this is going to make a really beautiful dress for all seasons because I can layer it up either with a top underneath or a cardigan over the top and also with tights because tights would go really nicely with that cotton fabric too. Um, and then the last fabric that I wanted to share, I know I've got two more things to share with you. So the next one is a fabric that I've got from um, Felicity Fabrics and it's a cotton dobby fabric. 
um, what do they call it? A crinkle dobby, crinkle cotton dobby. And this is in the terra colour. And they've got different colours of it. It's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful colour. And I think this is going to be perfect for the autumn. So I am definitely thinking now about the autumn. Um, it's going to be a difficult fabric to show on camera. Um, but it's got all these gorgeous little um, sort of dots, the raised dots, which gives that dobby effect. And it's got a crinkle effect too, which I love because it means that I don't have to iron it too much. It doesn't matter if it gets a little bit creased in the wash. It's always a win when you don't necessarily have to iron your fabric. And then this is going to become some kind of blouse. So I'll share more details um, in a blog post for Felicity Fabrics. But I just wanted to share that fabric because it's beautiful. Again, it's a plain. And a couple of things that I've bought this month are fairly plain. So I know that I do need to try and make some more plain garments um, for my wardrobe. And some of the patterns that I've bought are actually with that in mind. So I've got a trouser pattern that I'm going to talk about. And then I've also got the blouse pattern that I've already sort of talked about a little bit. Um, and that's because I want to make some plain um, sort of garments to go with some of my more wacky sort of print garments. Um, just so that some of like my trousers and skirts um, get a little bit more wear in the autumn and winter. So that is my plan for the next couple of months to sew some solid garments. So that's what that's going to become, some kind of blouse. Um, and then I've got one more thing that I want to share with you before I go on to my pattern. So the next fabric that I wanted to share with you was a denim fabric. It's just a plain black denim. Again, it's going to be really difficult to show. It's going to make the light go really strange. I don't know if I can bring it really, really close. There we go. Um, so it's just a black denim. It's got no stretch whatsoever. And I'm going to use it to make myself another denim jacket. Now, I got this from Avacan Fabrics, and I am a fabric ambassador for them, um, but this was not bought as part of the ambassador program. Um, I just really wanted some black denim that had no stretch, and I managed to find some on the Avacan website at a reasonable price. Um, I'll link it down below if you are interested, but it's really good quality. Um, I um, want to make myself another denim jacket. I know I've got loads that are all plain, um, but I'm feeling really inspired after my latest hack of the Sorrento jacket, which is by Sew so Over It from their Summer Dreaming ebook. So I bought some fringing from Fabric Godmother, not Fabric Godmother, I bought some fringing from the New Craft House and I wanted to see if I could hack the Sorrento jacket to put some fringing in the back and along the sleeves. Um, and I managed to do that and I'm really pleased with how well that turned out. I put a picture in of me wearing that so you can see what it looks like, but I have shared it in other blogs. Um, and I cannot remember who it was. I've gone through my messages, but I can't find the message. Somebody sent me a link to a denim jacket with rainbow fringing, and I just absolutely loved it and felt so inspired that I instantly started looking for some denim and some fringing that would work. Now, I've got a couple of ideas, and I'm not quite sure where I'm going to go with it yet, but I've bought the denim. This is going to be a long-term project. It's not going to be something that I sew up anytime soon um i think it's going to be something that will be on the back burner for a while because i've got loads of other stuff that i want to sew first um but i'm going to use this black denim and then from abacan fabric they've got a huge range of like trims and fringing so i've got two ideas and i'm not quite sure where to go with it so it'd be great to get your thoughts on this i bought this amazing sort of rainbow i think it was described as carnival trim um which is just fabulous i love all of the colors um so there's like blue and red and green and lilac and yellow and i think it's really really fun i bought loads of it because i wasn't quite sure where i was going to go with this so i could do an identical denim jacket to my navy one with the green trim where i just put this across the back and then i put it along the sleeves how fun is that or i've got some amazing pom-pom trim which i absolutely love and this is just a neon pom-pom trim with loads of different colours. So like there's, there's yellow and orange and blue and green and purple and pink. And I just absolutely love it. I think it's so fun. So my other thought was that I try and do pom-pom trim. So I put this pom-pom trim in the back of the denim jacket and then along the sleeves. Or I thought, do I mix it up? But then I'm worried about the colour of this not being too similar to the colour of this trim. So I was thinking... Do I use this along the sleeves and the pom-pom trim along the back? Or do I use the um, 
trim on the back and the pom pom on the sleeve or do I just stick with one? So really I'd like your help because I'm so undecided. Or oh, the other thing that I was thinking of doing is I've ordered some black Sean Ray fabrics. I want to make a version of the Helen's Closet Reynolds dress um, and I want to put some rick rack along the bottom and possibly along the neckline here and I thought I could use the pom pom trim on that or I could just save it for something else. Uh, when I get a moment of inspiration and um, but I've ordered some or I did order and it's arrived from Minerva Crafts I'm just going to open it some of this gorgeous rickrack which again is like a uh, rainbow print rickrack and I'm thinking of using that along the bottom of a Helen's Closet Reynolds dress and I thought maybe I could use this along the neckline of the Reynolds dress and then use the pom-poms for the hem of the Reynolds dress I've got loads of different ideas basically for the rickrack and the fringing and the pom-pom trim. I'm just not quite sure what to use for which ideas that I've got swimming around in my head. But I just thought I'd share those with you. Um, I think they'll be quite fun projects and I'm deliberately using a really plain dark fabric so that the rickrack and the fringing and the trim really get to shine. So those are just a few ideas that I've got swimming around in my head. And then on to the patterns that I've been buying. So I am going to need my notebook for this. I've got three patterns to talk to you about today. There are two by Anna Allen and then one by Bella Loves Pattern. So I'll start with the two Anna Allen patterns. And the first one is inspired by Bria underscore sews, who has sewn up a gorgeous pair of corduroy um, Pomona pants. And as soon as I saw those pants being shared, I instantly knew that I needed that pattern in my life. I've ummed and ahmed about getting it because I've got a few elastic waisted um, trousers and I wondered whether I needed another trouser pattern in my wardrobe, but I really love the different variations that you get of this pattern. Um, so it comes in sizes double zero to 22. Um, it is a, let me find my notes. It's an elastic waisted high rise loose fitting um, trouser pattern and you can also um, sew up a shorts version there are no side seams and then there are options for patch pockets on the front or patch pockets on the back um, view a is wide legged view b is a loose um, sort of tapered leg and then view c is a shorts version in terms of sizes a double zero is a waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches and then for a 22, it's a waist measurement of 41 inches and a hip measurement of um, 51 inches. I'm just checking my scribble on this post-it note. In terms of fabric, they recommend linen, silk, cotton canvas, cotton twill, denim and medium weight fabrics. And Bria underscore sews have sewn it up in this gorgeous pink like corduroy. Absolutely beautiful. And I have got some pink corduroy that I got from Fabric Godmother and I am shamelessly going to copy the beautiful pair that Bria Sews has made because they are just beautiful. And then I've got some green corduroy. So if they work out, basically I want to make three pairs. If the first pair work out and I really like them, then I'm going to make them in a green corduroy and then I've got a black corduroy as well. And I think that they're going to be just a great addition to my me made wardrobe because um, they'll go with lots of my tops and t-shirts. Um, so I'm very excited about giving that pattern a try. And then the second Anna Allen pattern, I've already talked about a little bit, but I'm really inspired by Louise, who is Louise Carmichael over on Instagram. She's made so many beautiful versions. And when I shared that I was inspired by her, she messaged to say, I think she was on her ninth shirt, which just goes to show how lovely this pattern is and how much she loves it. So it's the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen. And again, that comes in sizes double zero to 22. Um, it's a dartless blouse and dress with puff sleeves. It's got a button up front fold over placket and then a bias finished neckline. Um, I've seen so many beautiful versions of this blouse. And again, I think it's going to be a really versatile blouse pattern for my me made wardrobe. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend woven, cotton or linen, medium or lightweight like a voile, lawn or a silk. So I've got quite a few fabrics that I'm hoping to use to make some blouses using that pattern. In terms of sizes, for a double zero, it's a bust measurement of 31 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches and then a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a 22, it's a 48 inch bust, 41 inch waist and a 51 inch hip measurement. So they're both patterns that I have 
um, loved from afar, but I have finally taken the plunge and I've bought them. And then the final pattern that I wanted to share with you is a pattern by Bella Loves Patterns and it's called the Floor Dress and Top, spelt F-L-O-R, so I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, it comes in sizes 6 to 20, which is UK sizes, 34 to 48, which is European sizes, and then 2 to 16, which is a US size. So I would say it's not very size inclusive, which is a shame. Um, it's got different cup options, so an A, B cup option, a C cup option, and a D cup option. So in terms of sizes, for a UK 6, for an A, B cup, it's a 31 and a half inch bust measurement. For a C cup, it's a 32 and a half inch bust measurement. And for a D cup, it's 33 and a half inch bust measurement. For a waist measurement, it's 23 and a half inches, and then hip measurement, 33 inches. And then for a UK 20, for an AB cup, it's 44 and a half inch um, bust measurement. For a C cup, it's 45 and a half inch uh, bust measurement. And then for a D cup, 46 and a half inch um, bust measurement. And then for a waist, it's 36 inches and a hip, 46 inches. Um, it's a romantic wrap dress and top, and the top is quite cropped. Um, it's got statement ruffles that go through the shoulders, princess seams and wide waist ties. And I absolutely love the silhouette of this dress. Um, I haven't got pictures of it, so I will insert pictures so you can see what it looks like. Um, and I just fell in love with the sort of the fit of it and the ruffles and the fact that you can layer it up so you can put a top underneath and it still looks really lovely. I think it's going to be a really versatile pattern in my wardrobe and I've got loads of cotton fabrics that I know are just going to work really well for this dress. So I'm really excited about getting it sewn up. And I think this is going to be a pattern that I sew up quite a lot um, in the autumn. So I'm very, very excited about that. Let me know if you've got any of the patterns um, and I can go and check them out. So if you've sewn them up and shared them over on Instagram, let me know if you've got any of the fabrics too. And if you've got any ideas about what I can do with some of the fabrics that I've shared with you today. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye.